Welcome to another edition of Mystics Corner Game Day inside the Mystics locker room. I'm Frank Handerhand with Christy Winter Scott, and the Mystics, for the first time in uh, team history, are two and zero. It's hard to believe, and a big weekend for the Mystics, coming off victories at Connecticut to get the season going, and then yesterday against Atlanta. And just your quick thoughts on, on the weekend: two and zero. Hard to believe, or not hard to believe? Well, I don't think it's hard to believe because the energy level that this team has and the confidence and the competitive nature of this team is tremendous. And, you know, to go up to Connecticut and win that season opening game and then to come home the very next day after traveling and play the home opener and win in the fashion that they did is it speaks volumes to what this team can do this season. The uh, team took the bus back from Connecticut, got back at 2 a.m., so they were a little sleepy. They had a slow start, and I, I was a little worried there at the beginning. They didn't score for like five minutes, and they have this new tradition where everybody stands up. I was like, oh, please score so people can sit down. But <laughs> right. after the slow start, they really got it going. Well, Tasha Humphrey and Mati Ajavan, who I love, uh, came in and really sparked the team in the second quarter and just brought the team back to life. And the Mystics actually outscored Atlanta 30-8 to in the second quarter after being outscored 22-8 to in the first quarter. So definitely the second quarter set the tone for the remainder of the game, but those two came in and really did a tremendous job. The Mystics are 2-0, and and we caught up with some of the Mystics players after they beat the Atlanta Dream yesterday, 77-71. Mati Azjavan, Marissa Coleman, Elena Beard, and others here on Mystics Corner Game Day. Came in the game and sparked your team off the bench real good today with your offense and defense. Coming into the game, what did you want to get accomplished? Um, like you said, I just wanted to get a team a spark, you know. Uh, at the present moment, you know, we were down uh, 28, 22 to 8. So when I came in the game, I just wanted to, you know, help uplift the team. Okay. You guys started off real slow offensively in the first quarter. What fueled you guys to play better in the second quarter? I mean, the fact that we started slow, you know, uh, you know, uh, Leonard is a good team. And if we were to continue how we were, we weren't going to get the win. So that was oh. our motivation. Okay. Now, and the, going into the fourth quarter, you guys had a 16-point lead. What were the guys? What were the coaches telling you guys to maintain control of the game? Um, just keep the intensity. Uh, we couldn't let down because Atlanta. They just came off a you know a stellar win last night. So in order to you know keep them down, we had to you know get up. Okay. You guys are now two and zero into the season. What do you think you guys need to do better to, to, as the as the season progresses? Um, just keep our intensity up. Uh, we can't, I mean, of course, this is a game of runs, but we have to be able to contain contain other teams more. Now, this was your first home opener. How did it feel? Yeah, it was great to see a lot of familiar faces from Maryland and know I have my parents in the stand. It, it was a great feeling to be able to finally uh, have that, that one in my belt. Okay. Now, looking at the stats, one would think you got a little nervous because you was at home because, you know, your first uh, debut NBA, WNBA game, you had 16 points, and at home you had nine. What do you think was the difference from you playing on the road and playing at home today? I don't think there, there was a big difference. You know, I still went out just as confident in, in, in my game, but I think, you know, A.B. stepped up big today. and it, it was her night, and, you know, we just followed her lead. You and uh, your um, a teammate, T. Ajavon, came in the game, and it's like you guys gave the team the spark you guys needed to get a comeback in the second quarter. Tell us what you guys wanted to get accomplished coming into the game. You know, before uh – Excuse me, before going into the game and, and the halftime, you know, all the, the bench we all talk about, whenever we get in the game, we're going to bring a spark. And I think uh, when Mati, myself, and Tasha got in, that's definitely what we did. Now, going into the fourth quarter, you guys had a 16-point lead. What were the coaches telling you guys to help stay maintained and focused and going to finishing the game off? Just try to put them away. Just try to bury them and, and not let up. After a slow first half, you, um, you finished with 27 points in the team's home opener. What were the differences in halves for you? Um, I just think the first half, I was just filling everything out. Um, I like to get my teammates involved. And with the team that we have, you know, I think everyone comes out, they do their job. Unfortunately, we were down by, what, almost 20 points in the first half, and we came back. Um, and I think in the second half, I just came out with a different mentality and, and knowing that we had to score. Speaking about when you guys were down, talk about the play of uh, rookie Marissa Coleman and teammate Matij Ajavon. They came off the team sparking you guys both on offense and defense. How do you feel they play affected you guys in winning the, um, your, your home opener? That's the beauty of our team. You know, um, we have people that come off the bench that can score. Any, on any given night, it's going to be another person. That's, we have 10 legitimate scores, and I think Mati and Marissa Coleman came in and gave us some big 
you know, offensive possessions and defensive possessions, and they did a they did a pretty good job. Okay. Now going into the fourth quarter, you guys were up by 16 points. Mm -hmm. What were the coaches telling you guys to help you maintain control of the game to finish off strongly? I mean, it's nothing that the coaches are telling us. The only thing that they can do is prepare us. Um, they call out the plays. They tell us what to do defensively, and I think it's up to the players to get on the court and perform, and we did. Now, for some of the fans who didn't get to see the game opener, can you please show us your swag surfing dance that you did coming down the runway? No! Uh, that was only a one-time thing. If you weren't here to see it, you can't see it again. You know, Christy, the one thing I like about this team, watching the intros yesterday and the home opener, it looks like the team's really having fun. I know they haven't been together for that long, but team camaraderie is very important. And going to a place like Detroit, it could help them out, right? Well, team camaraderie is always a factor when you have a successful team. And I tell you what, these young ladies are competitive. And they've come from winning programs. They know that about one another. And I think they respect that about one another. And when you have that mix, and you have that respect in the locker room, it carries over to the court. And you've seen that as evidence in the first two games. So I think the confidence level is going to be very high going into Detroit. And I think it's going to be a fantastic showing for the Mystics. Now, last question, the key to the Mystics' success against Detroit? I think it's going to be their defense. Their defense was on point the first two games. And I think the rotations were right there. Even though they had a couple charges that they took. And the, the back line rotation was right there. They had their rebounding together. And offensively, they have so many weapons. It's just hard to stop one player. So with that being said, they have a lot going for them. And the depth is incredible. They come off the bench and bring that energy. And the bench had 33 points against Atlanta. So a lot of positive factors for the Mystics going into the game against Detroit. We are inside the Mystics locker room. And Marissa and Elena's uh, locker is right behind us. Right across the way is Lindsey Harding and Mystics Corner Game Day recently caught up with the newest Mystic acquisition. The last movie I saw was uh, Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian's. LeBron. My pre-game ritual is uh, to say a prayer. Toughest opponent I've faced in my career has been Elena Beard. My least favorite part of practice is uh, long three hours. I don't have a favorite place in DC yet because I haven't been anywhere yet. <laughs> favorite place to shop is Nordstrom's. My favorite restaurant is Meggiano's. If I was not a professional basketball player, I would probably be in law school right now to be a lawyer. The best part about being a Washington Mystic is having great fans like you. Good to see uh, things from Lindsey Harding, and she's really brought a lot of minutes at least. We, yeah. We've seen her play a lot of minutes for the Mystics in the first two games, a lot of assists. Her shot's not going down just quite yet, but that will come for the Washington Mystics. The Mystics visiting the Detroit Shock on Wednesday night. Last thoughts, because this is uh, program number two, and if you're wondering what this is all about, we're just taking you inside the Mystics organization, getting a little uh, in depth -er. Is that a word? <laughs> Uh, it's all right. Is. Scrabble. <laughs> all right, for Chrissy Winter Scott, I'm Frank Andran. Thanks for joining us here on WashingtonMystics.com.